Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a very heavy heart that we start this new series called Remembering Coach Dave Smolinski. Uh, Coach Smo had a tremendous impact on the Hamburg community, the Western New York baseball community, and, and I think it's gonna, you know, we're going to find out as the stories trickle in over the next couple of weeks that um, his reach and his impact went way further than we even imagined. Uh, coach Smo, coach, um, he, he taught in the elementary school at Armour. Uh, fifth grade and and coach the baseball team for right around 30 years and so what we're going to do in these series is we interview um, you know former players and people that worked alongside him is we're going to try to do our best to kind of paint the picture and tell the story of coach Smo and kind of dive into what made him such a tremendous person um, one that was always full of such optimism and positive energy and um, just a tremendous mentor to so many people myself included so our first guest is actually our, our longtime lacrosse coach at Hamburg, Coach Jerry Severino, uh, did his student teaching with Coach Smo. And so we're going to tap into Coach Smo as the, the teacher and appreciate everything that he did in the classroom first. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're welcoming in a, a super special guest tonight. We wish the circumstances were different, uh, but we're welcoming in Coach Severino as we look back and remember our longtime baseball coach at Hamburg, Coach Dave Smolinski. In fact, ironically, uh, Coach Sev and Coach Smo had a really unique connection. Um, coach, can you describe how you first met Coach Smo and, and your experience with your student teaching with him? Sure, sure, uh, Derek. Thanks very much for having me. I'm, I'm really honored to be able to talk about David Smolinski. Uh, he was my cooperating teacher in 1974. Uh, I was about to graduate from Fredonia and um, fell into a teaching, a student teaching situation that, that really kicked off a, a beautiful career. Um, and, and I think uh, I know that David had a lot to do with that. I walked into his classroom to meet him the first day and um, he was having some health problems actually and he was missing some school, school doctor's appointments this and that so he had some substitutes in the classroom my first couple of weeks yeah. he handed me the plan book and said I'm really sorry but take over <laughs> and and it was it happened to be my third and last student teaching situation so I was ready to do it but I hadn't expected to you know be handed the the ball so to speak sure. and um, and I embraced it and with his guidance that was the beginning of a, a beautiful career that's amazing so I was I was kind of curious as to like what you know what he was like in the classroom and what his demeanor was with the students. Did you, did you happen to get a glimpse of that when he got uh, oh, yeah. when he felt better? Oh, sure. When he came back after a couple of weeks, he still expected me to continue, but he was with a watchful eye and, and a lot of uh, advice and mentoring. Um, you know, we, we team taught a good deal. Okay. Um, Regarding his demeanor in the classroom, you knew him. Um, he was a joker and he was entertaining. The kids loved him, of course, as I'm sure his athletes did. Um, and it was it was just a a great way for me to take a look at at an educator and steal some of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what we all did. Yeah. And that's what's kind of, I think all of us in the educational field, you know, when we get to that student teaching, we're kind of at the mercy of a little bit of blind luck, you know, as far as what you fall into. And, and I think you hit the jackpot there with connecting yeah. with Coach Smo. Um, yeah. your, your comment on Twitter absolutely uh, gave me goosebumps. You said, he gave me the green light that I needed to start my career. So appreciative. Um, so how did that launch you? Like, you know, down the road, when you have your own classroom at West Seneca and eventually Orchard Park, um, what were some of those lessons from Coach Smo that, that really translated? Well, 
I just I just always remembered the way he dealt with his students, mm. um, the relationships that he created, uh, the fact that his students looked up to him and and loved him. You know, if you can be, I think I learned to be an advocate for my students as much as anything. Yeah. You know, with Dave. Um, and you know, as as an educator, once you show them that you're going to advocate for them, they're yours. So I have I have an awful lot to be very grateful to Dave Smolinski for that. Wow, that's that is awesome. It's a building um, block, you know. Yeah, and, and that's, that's really what he gave me. That's awesome. So um, we're we're trying to kind of paint the picture and and tell the story of Coach Smo to. You know, a lot of people like me that kind of missed out on, you know, getting a chance to witness him in action, you know, in his prime. Um, so he had started coaching baseball when you were there. Um, what do you kind of, you know, I guess, what did you notice about him maybe on the coaching side? Um, I'm, I'm guessing he, had, he was, you know, a real passionate guy that loved baseball from what I can tell. Very true. Yeah, he was he was the baseball guy, much like yourself. If if anybody is a baseball guy, he, Dave Smolinski was the epitome. Yeah. Um, but what I also saw was that he didn't shortchange his students because he was, you know, in season. Um, he stayed until the very end of the day and and dealt with his kids when. You know, when he probably was thinking, oh, I've got to get to practice. This is what has to happen today. You know, I, I really want to stress that he, he never short, shortchanged his, his students in the classroom. Wow, that's awesome. And as I'm talking to you, I'm thinking of things that I hadn't realized before this, maybe. Now I'm, now I'm remembering, you know, the beauty of the man. That's, uh, yeah, history, history is our best teacher with, with, you know, the greats like Coach Small. Um, so as, as your career started to progress and, and take off, and, and obviously you've left your niche in the lacrosse world like no other, um, how was that interaction with Coach Small when you would randomly bump into him, you know, 10 years, 20 years down the road? It was, it was a lot of fun, really, because he teased me about lacrosse and and i gave it right back to him <laughs> after i graduated yeah. about baseball you know he would say well this is the american sport and i said well you know lacrosse is the oldest north american sport did you know that dave <laughs> so we were back and forth you know on on that line quite a bit yeah. um, i'd see him i'd see him out in the, in the town in the village, um, at the store, at baseball games, sometimes that I would I would happen by, and it was always a great reunion. Mm -hmm. I've, um, you know, my experience with Coach Smo was, of course, during his retirement, and um, my goodness, if I if I had to create a, a a dream list of how to get it right during retirement, I feel like he checked all of those boxes. I think he. Uh, he, he lived a good life um, and enjoyed it to its fullest during retirement. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, have you taken some notes in that, in that regard as well? Yeah, I, I saw him at, um, at Bandits games. I saw him at football games. And you're right, he, I saw him on the golf course a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, he did enjoy his retirement. And, I, and I'm trying to do the same. I, um, if this COVID business will leave us alone. We can resume our lives, you know? Yeah, yeah, it can't happen soon enough, that's for sure. Um, let me give you a chance here, Coach, uh, uh, to kind of empty your pockets, so to speak, and, and any other stories, uh, big or small, um, that have kind of flooded your memory bank, uh, you know, since you heard the news uh, about his passing? Oh, absolutely. Um, this is this is a little tidbit that um, I'm always entertained when I think of it. My wife to be, Carolyn, 
um, moved to Western New York in the fall of 74, and we got married in December. And, um, and when I was student teaching with Dave, we would go out, we'd be at parties or whatever, and I would always bring Carolyn with me. And he was old school enough to bring up the fact that maybe we better not talk about you two living together before you're married, because I wouldn't want you to get in trouble. I don't, to this day, I don't know if he was serious or if he was just uh, busting, you know? Yeah. Um, so he and Jim Sexton, I don't know if you remember Jim Sexton. Oh, yes, he was a, yes. A good friend of his at Armour came up with the, uh, the plan that whenever we're in public, we're going to say that Carolyn is your sister. Your sister is, is visiting from out of town. <laughs> I thought, really? No, you know, it's 1974, and I've been through the 60s and half of the 70s, and I'm thinking, this is not right. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a new world here. What are we talking about? But to this, I mean, the last time I saw him, and I can't remember when it was, a year ago or something, he brings that up and says, you know, I miss your sister. You know, my wife has passed since, since then. But he says, uh, I miss your sister a lot, as much as I miss you. And um, that's sort of the heart-to-heart the -heart kind of thing that we had. Sure, sure. That's, uh, oh, my goodness. That is, um, yeah, I can't imagine the, the stories that are going to come out over the next couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, that just uh, speak to his character and speak to his, you know, unselfishness and stuff. And, and, and that's a great one to fit right in there. Um, well, by golly, coach, thanks so much. And I, and I, yeah, I, I regret that this is our, you know, first time getting together in quite some time, you know, uh, I guess since Coach Cauley's little golf tournament there in the fall. But uh, like you said, soon enough, we'll be back to normal and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to catch up under better circumstances. You know that Coach Cauley and, uh, and Coach Mack were playing together that day. Yes. Did you ever see their scorecard? Uh, no, no, no. It's a mystery to me. None of us did. None of us did. <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, thanks a lot, Coach. I appreciate it. And uh, you take care, okay? Derek, I miss the brotherhood. I'll see you when we can get together, okay? All right, buddy. Take care, man. All right. See you. Yeah.